Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the shading section of Trap Code Particular. This allows us to control light and shadow within Trap Code Particular. Now, let me jump to the shading section of this example right here. This is just a couple different particle systems. One is using some basic triangles and the other systems are some sphere particles. So just kind of a layered kind of mix here. And we're going to talk about different ways to control the lighting and shadow of these particles. Now to quickly illustrate the difference of what particles can look like with and without shading, we'll go to the master system and we're going to look at the shading section. Now the first control in here is to simply turn shading on or off. Now when it's off, this is the default state. The particles behave as if there is equal light everywhere in space from all angles. When I turn shading on, Particular will now assume that your light sources are coming from your After Effects lights. Your particles can respond to all the different types of lights within After Effects, such as point lights, like so. Now notice as I drag this point light closer to the center or I move it away, that we see the effect of the light on the particles. They can also be spotlights, like this. And we also have the ability to work with ambient light. Ambient lights don't have position. Ambient light simply exists everywhere in 3D space, equally illuminating all the particles and all surfaces. Let's talk quickly about some of these parameters. You'll find that the light and shading controls are very similar to what you might find in After Effects material options or other 3D programs, but there's a couple differences. The light fall off by default defaults to a natural fall off. So notice as I take this light and I move it away from my particles, it no longer has an effect. The intensity of the light falls off as we have increasing distance away from the light. So in short, the light is brighter as it gets closer to the particles and it has less of an effect when it's further away from the particles because the light has a natural fall off around the area of the light. We can turn that off if for whatever reason you want to do that simply by setting the light fall off to none. This is how After Effects used to behave quite a while ago, but After Effects also has its own natural fall off with lighting. So I highly recommend that you simply leave it set to the natural setting. The nominal distance is the distance from any given light where it will be illuminated at 100% of the value of the light. So in other words, the fall off in the distance from the light doesn't start at the exact center. It actually has a little bit of an area around the light where things are illuminated at the value of the light. So this is a good way to sort of spread out the effect of your lights without having to turn up the overall intensity. And that's a good thing because turning up overall intensity can yield bright spots and overlit areas. So when you are finding that the effect of your lights isn't quite as dramatic as you'd like it to be, nominal distance is actually a very good thing to reach for to spread out the effect of your lights. The ambient slider affects how much ambient light will be reflected by your particles. So a default value of 20 means that even with my After Effects ambient light set to 100%, my particles are only seeing a 20% effect of the ambient light. And this is generally pretty good. You want to use ambient lights to introduce a little bit of light back into your scene to even out your dark areas. If I turn this up, you'll notice that we start to have less of a feeling of light and dark and more of an equally lit kind of feel. So for this reason, you generally are going to keep this ambient control pretty low. Now the flip side of that is the diffuse slider. This simply controls how much of the other lights are affecting your particles. So if I turn the diffuse down to zero, we're only seeing the ambient light. So if I turn diffuse up, this is controlling the effect of my point lights and spotlights in my composition. Specular refers to bright spots in a material that reflect back into the camera as the light source hits the surface and we have an angle such that it will reflect the light right back into the camera. Very glossy surfaces tend to have very specular reflection. I might need to turn this up quite a bit just to show a dramatic, uh, some sort of dramatic reflection going on. So there, you can see it out on the edges. 
this particle right here, which is actually facing flat to the camera, it is reflecting light and reflecting a specular highlight back into the camera. The specular sharpness is simply going to control the width of the area of the specular reflection. Now, more interesting is this thing called the reflection map. So the reflection map will act as a spherical reflection on all of our particles, and the particles will reflect the color of the ref reflection map back into the camera. So if I set my reflection map to be something like this, like an environmental reflection map, and I go into my reflection map settings here, and I set this to that image, we'll see that we have a different type of lighting introduced to the particles. Now, I've got other types of lighting going on in here, so let me show a slightly different example. In this case, I have a uh, OBJ sphere model emitting particles. They're all moving away from the center of the sphere, and I have the particles oriented along their paths, essentially creating a spherical shape like this. Now, I have very little lighting going on here, but you can see the, some variations in the color in the particles. This is due to the reflection map that we've set. So if I turn this off, you can see what that looks like. Now we just see the results of the point light and the ambient light. If I turn the reflection map back on, we can see it inheriting the color and reflections of that reflection map. Next, we have the section called shadow lits, and these are really cool. I really like using these. I'll jump to a basic example here where I've got some sphere particles emitting from a point. Now, when we're using two-dimensional images like this, and these are all flat to the camera, this can result in not a very volumetric feel. It just doesn't have any variation in light and shadow. Now, I could set up some lighting here to create a a bit of variance in the lighting overall by maybe setting a point light and then enabling shading. Now I highly recommend that you use more than one light if you're trying to light particles because it's quite diff difficult just using one light. So this adds a little bit of light and shadow to our particles, but let me turn on shadow lits. And what this will do is project a shadow behind the particles and use its overall depth to control the shadow lit and sort it in Z space to create sort of a dense shadowy feeling on the inside of the particles. So let me enable shadow lits and I'll enable this for the main particles, which is what we're looking at. We're not using any aux particles. So immediately you can sense a feeling of depth and shadow separating particles in the front from particles behind it. We have a bit of control over these. We can certainly control the color. So let's say I wanted more of a purple shadow. I could inject a different color in there. And we can control the overall strength of the color. But more importantly, we have this adjustment to the opacity where we can darken the shadow on the inside. Adjusting the size of the shadow is something that you probably don't need to do that much because if you bring it down too small, you'll start to see the individual shadows. And the shadows definitely need to be larger than the source particles to really kind of work. We can also adjust the distance in Z space of the shadows. Now, the placement here isn't something that I always go to, but there's a cool thing you can do by setting the shadows to always be in front. And what this does is create a really cool sort of shading effect on the front of the particle. Now, I definitely need to turn up the opacity of the particle. I'll adjust the distance to put it right on top of the particle. So let me zoom in a little bit. Now, if I adjust the size and I make these maybe a little bit smaller than the source particle, you can see it giving sort of this cool kind of shading effect on the front of the particle. The other options in here aren't used quite as often. Auto generally works pretty well. There's this other option called project, which if we use another light and we call this one shadow, we can control the projection of the shadow lit using the 3D position of the light. So as I move this around, especially in Z space, you'll see that the, the light is now controlling the size and distance of the shadow light. 
you have the option to set it to always behind in cases where you might have shadowlets flickering because of depth sorting issues, which isn't something that I, I see that often. So the shading section is actually pretty short. A lot of these are concepts that you should be fairly familiar with already because After Effects already has lighting built in, but there are things that are specific to particular, such as the shadow lights and the different ways to control the effect of the lights on the particles. So that wraps it up for this section. My name's Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in the next lesson.